All right, the build is very, very straightforward. You will need uh, M3 nuts and bolts, so keep those handy. And you will also need the M2 self-tapping screws of different sizes. I have got a box of those right here. And a 502 super glue. So uh, very little things to glue actually. This time I went with the screw stuff so that you can easily disassemble your aircraft without having to have everything permanent, okay? But still there are a few things to glue, so let's get on with the gluing. Uh, the first thing is you need to glue the tail, okay? So one here and one here. This will be one first part that you will glue, just like this, all right? As you can see right here in my hands very, very clearly, this is the first part that you will glue. And uh, backside the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, they will simply screw on this one, okay? You can actually glue them as well, but if you want, you can simply put the screws on it, all right? So this is the first part that you will glue, okay? And the other part that you will glue will be the servos. Now, before you glue the servos, uh, fuel tanks type of things under the arm, just quickly give you an overview so later everything will go faster, okay? After that, you put a servo in one of these fuel tanks or servo holders, all right? And match where the horn will be closer, okay? Because if you install it down here, then, you know, as you can see, they just go way too far from each other. They are not parallel. So make sure that you will align them and get them as close as parallel to each other. And then you will glue the uh, you know, servo holder. Yes, for the front landing gear, nose landing gear, you have these two little pieces that will glue right here. And then you will have your front landing gear between these. So this is basically your front landing gear parts which will go right here, one here and one here. And then you will have your little, little wheel which can actually move and you can drive it on the ground, okay? I mean, yes, I agree with the question, why not I just printed these things right here on this nose of the aircraft? Now, the answer is because I designed my fuselage, 3D printed aircraft fuselage, not to just look beautiful and highly scaled or with more scale details and unique of course, but also I designed them by keeping in mind easy 3D printing so you don't have much troubles 3D printing them. And number three, to save you all from the troubles of watching a tiny little part breaking away from a big part and then you have to go and print a whole big part away. You understand my point? Now, if I have 3D printed, I mean designed and combined this piece right here and 3D printed it, I know it would be easy. But number one, the orientation to 3D print will be difficult and will use more filament for generating spores. And number two, as I just mentioned, if you break this out, if you broke this part, you'll have to 3D print the whole thing. Now, as you have glued it here, if you broke this part and you broke your front landing gear, you can just print these little parts again and glue them once again to have your front landing gear. See, that is why it takes me a whole lot to design one aircraft fuselage because there's a lot of consideration goes into the design for all of you to have an easy, relaxing, and fun time to print and enjoy these aircraft. Alrighty, the gluing is done. Now the, uh, you know, the horizontal vertical stabilizer will go here with two self-tapping screws. So we'll do it later. Basically, you can do this whole piece later and you can only do this central part and everything that needs to fly this thing will be in the central part and you can basically <laughs> just test fly the central part and tweak all the PIDs and once, because you're gonna have some crashes and I have tested this thing. I mean, I abused this uh, completely built fuselage, crashed many times and it, mashallah, intact, did not break anything. But. I learned from my lessons the hard way we all learn, don't we? 
I learned that you can first prepare the central part, test fly it until you nail those PIDs. And once you have done that and your central piece, the central part, the heart and soul of this bicopter is flying very well, then you can go ahead and install the to top part, the tail, the front, the tailgate, and everything else that you want. So before we install the motors, uh, please do remember how do you prepare your ESCs. Number one, try to buy the ESCs that have slightly longer motor side cables, okay? And backside, it doesn't matter because you will add uh, XT60 or a connector of your choice. And what you will do is both ESCs red will combine to the red single right here to the connector, and both ESCs black will combine to the black uh, of the connector right here. So you will power two ESCs from one battery, okay? Now, before when I prepared, the first version, I had to cut the motor cables, install another longer cable so they can run all the way inside the arms and go down there. And let me tell you, the soldering is a kind of headache and I don't want my clients and my followers, those all of you beautiful people out there, I don't want you to do any kind of soldering. So I had to go back to the design board and I have to redesign the whole arms and everything. Now, before you install the arms, you have to do this so your life will be easy. Number one, Pick one, uh, you know, a motor mount and install your motor. Now, I have designed it this way that when you, uh, I, I mean, these motors have universally the same type of uh, screws, uh, holes, and dimensions. So I designed it in a way that when you install it right and you put this tilt arm on top of the arm, uh, tilt plate on top of the arm, the motor cables will stay right on top of the opening on the arm, as you can see right here. All right, and so you can easily put the cables in and run them inside. All right, so first we're gonna install the motors. Now, before we install the motors, I have to give you this tip that choose a screw that is long enough, but not too long to actually go out all the way inside the motor and touch the motor winding. Because if the screw touch, touches the motor winding, you will short circuit something and you will burn your ESCs, you will have issues. So do remember this thing, all right? This is a very important piece of information and this will save you from burning your ESCs right at this point. So let's see, uh, where is that screw holding up? Uh, this side this side I have tightened the screw all the way and if you look at it I believe the camera should be I believe the camera should be able to focus it and I can see the screw is pretty far from the uh, uh, motor winding alrighty now that the motors have been installed you will need slightly longer screws now these are let's say from inside to outside right here these are approximately 32.5 millimeter long screws and they are i believe they are m3 as well yes 2.8 as you can see these are m3 longer screws all right you will need them for your motor tilt all right and the nut, the nut, you will have to dig in right now. If you're holding the arm like this, there, this is the top of the arm because the servo holder is on the bottom, all right? So from the top of the arm on this opening, you can drop this little nut, okay, hexagonal nut inside and, uh, you know, seat it right. So using my trusted tweezers, I am dropping the nut there and position it and you see it's very easy now you can just press it inside okay and once it's in move your screw all the way in and just to seat your uh, nut inside tighten the screw all right and don't over tighten it because you you don't have anything in the middle and you might break this part okay tighten it in till you see the screw coming out of the nut all right and that is enough that's a lock nut all right so that will seat the nut inside now is uh i'm going to show you only one motor so you will learn and you will do the other motor the same way around okay so now what you will do is you'll put the motor here obviously and 
put the screw through here so you will have the tilt, all right? But before doing that, before doing that, what you need to do is drop one cable in because, because of the connectors, you can drop one cable by one cable and hold it down here, okay, in the groove. And then it will leave this space for the other cable to come out, hold it down there, and the third one, and hold it down there. All right. Now, what you will do is you will take your ESCs in the main fuselage, and you need to remember left ESC and right ESC, okay? Which is very, very easy. Even a baby can remember the way you are putting them in. So what you need to do now, get the cables, motorcycle cables of the ESCs out of the fuselage. See, you might say, hey Ali, why this much trouble? Hey, it's because I'm trying to save you from soldering extra long cables. So once the motor is inside and your cables are out here, do not install the motor now. Hold your house, horses. I know you want to install the motor and see how this thing fly. Match the arm. See, this arm is going to install right here because as you can see, here is one slope, all right? So matching these, matching these, this arm will install here. What you will do is just connect any of the motor cable to any of the ESC cable, these three cables. Having to have a bicopter, one motor at the right and one motor at, at the left, they have to spin against each other. So one motor, let's say this is the left of the aircraft, will spin clockwise, but the right motor will spin counterclockwise, okay? And to change these directions of motor spinning is very easy. All you need to do is swap one of the, uh, two of these cables, okay? So if your motor is spinning counterclockwise, on the left side and you want to spin it clockwise, all you need to do is come here, disconnect two of the cables, swap them and connect them again. We'll do it later, okay? So, you're not gonna install the arms right now, you're not gonna install the motor right now. All you need to do is learn how things are going and how you're saving yourself from soldering. So now, having to have motor here, take one cable by one cable, all right? And drop it from this cut of the arm just like this and then you can shove these connectors down there and your motor fits right here just like this okay and now you can all the way push these cables in and install your arm here with two screws long screws uh, m3 and two m3 nuts down there you install the arm and now you can see your motor will tilt and your cables are neatly running from inside the arm and you still have a slack on the ESC that you can actually tuck the ESC in its place, the place that I have designed, and you know, run the cables down here easily. Okay, there will be a plate right here for the flight controller. So this is very, very easy to install the motor and arm. Um, I have shown you one, you will go ahead and do the second one the same way, but you will not install any of the screws right here until we install everything and we make sure the motors are spinning in the right direction, okay? So don't install this screw, don't install this screw until we install the flight controller, make all the connections to the flight controller and test the motors if they are spinning in the right direction. Once they are spinning in the right direction, then you can install all the screws, servos, and everything else. Basically, you can install the servo right now because uh, you will have to get the servo. Uh, you will have to get the servo cable going from inside as well. So this is gonna be, once again, very, very simple. Uh, install the servo, all right? And make sure that the servo cable goes in from here as well and sits inside the arm, okay? Goes in from here, and now you can install the arm easily. So every cable is running neatly inside. All right, now, once you have put the cables in and you made sure every cable is running in, what you need to do is take the servo cables and take the ESC cables, all right? Remember left ESC and right ESC, okay? And right servo and left servo. This is very, very sensitive. And now you will have to slide the base plate in which will house the flight controller and battery under it, okay? So push it in, nice and slow, it will come. Making sure the servo and ESC cables 
are gonna stay out. It's a little tricky for one person, but you should be able to do it. All right. Once you find those sliding points, it should slide in really nicely. All right, see? And as you notice, there are screw holes. These are M2 self-tapping screws, and they're holes I have designed on the base plate as well. So match those holes, moving the base plate forward and backward, okay? And now you can put those screws. Now you have your left servo, sorry, this is the right side because nose is pointing. Now you have your right servo and right ESC cable out on top and left servo and left ESC cable out on top. Now, you have to install the flight controller and there's an arrow on KK2 which should point forward. This is the nose of the aircraft. So all I need to do is glue it right here. But, but before you glue it right here, here is a very important tip. Now here's another most important tip that you cannot ignore because if you do ignore it, you're gonna have a lot of headaches. Bicopters, they are CG sensitive, center of gravity. So if your arms are right here, right arm and left arm, right motor, left motor, servo down there, this, this line coming from under the motor, under the arm is your center of gravity and your flight controller should be mounted exactly on that center of gravity. Before flying, you should move the battery and every other pilot, dummy pilot, whatever things you have inside your aircraft, in a way to make sure that the center of gravity stays right under these two arms. That, that line, you can form it in your head, that line, that line under right motor to left motor, that line is the most important line of your life. So the next step for me, glue it, glue the flight controller right here. I will show you in the next step after the gluing, how to make connections where each servo, each ESC will go and where you will connect your receiver, okay? Where you will connect your u back. So next is the connections. Bounce back, that's what I do. Fast we build, bounce back.